Hi, welcome back to my channel. My name is Laura, and these are my favorite shoujo manga. So I'm going to talk about my favorite shoujo manga today. Um, basically, I've just taken kind of my top 12 or 13 titles. I was going to do top 10, and then I really couldn't exclude a couple, and I felt like if I excluded them, it just wouldn't really kind of represent my taste in shoujo manga. Um, and uh, so yeah, I have a I have a broad representation. Mostly these are titles that just sort of like make me so happy when I read them. They aren't necessarily the best in all of shoujo manga, and they aren't necessarily going to be kind of the popular choices in shoujo manga. Um, you know, they're just things that I have read that I like to reread that I think are uh, so wonderful, um, and uh, I thought I would share them with you. So hopefully you will stick around and find out about it. So my number 12 pick is Tale of the Moon by Rinko Ueda. This is a 15 volume plus one prequel volume series about a ninja girl who is sort of the daughter of the head of the ninja clan and she is a klutz as a ninja and so she's sent on her first mission which is essentially to go to their family clan um, and marry and bear the child of the leader of that clan who happens to be Hattori Hanzo. He is very handsome but also he is incredibly her opposite. You know she's a klutz, she's really ditzy, she's really cheerful and he's you know her exact opposite and so she's really being sent there to melt his heart or warm his heart um, or something like that. So. Um, it's really, really a cute, uh, really fun, really uh, comedic uh, series, but it really has some heartbreaking elements in it, as well as um, also includes some real historical figures in it, which I really like to see. So I enjoy it quite a lot. Um, I enjoy it every time I read it. I read it probably every other year since I've owned it, and uh, it's just a lot of fun. Plus, Rinko Ueda is probably my favorite artist of babies. Um, her drawings of babies are just, like, the cutest. Number 11 is Palette of the Twelve Secret Colors by Nari Kusakawa. Uh, Nari Kusakawa is sort of an unusual artist. Um, her characters have, like, way too large eyes. Her characters have very kind of almost boxy features. Um, this isn't a typical shoujo manga. It's not very, like, romantic and flowery. Basically, it's more of a comedy adventure. This is another title where the girl is a bit of a klutz um, and she falls in love with um, a doctor. Um, but you don't really feel much chemistry between them. It's more of a comedy dynamic. They're a comedy duo. Um, so this is actually a fantasy title about a, um, a special island who the ha inhabitants have a rare bird and they have a rare talent and what they are able to do is they are able to draw the colors um, from their animal, from their bird, and able to use those colors in creating brocade and jewels and, and painting things uh, beautifully. So they, um, this island, this tropical island, earns their living from the colors of their birds. And this particular girl is in training to become a pallet. Um, and because she's so klutzy, she's often getting color on her, and the doctor, of course, is always helping her remove that color and put it back on her bird. It's very unusual, it's very weird, um, and the art is very uh, different, uh, certainly in the kind of general realm of shoujo manga, at least that what comes over here. But I just really like it. It is very happy. It's very upbeat. Um, there isn't really anything dark or tragic or um, anything angsty in it, which is just like refreshing. I love it. Um, and the birds in it have a lot of character. They're actually more of the star of the series and then the humans in this series. So that's pretty much what I'm in it for, but it, uh, it's just really delightful and it makes me happy. Um, number 10 would be Mars by Fuyumi Soryo. This is a 15 volume series, again with a prequel, so it's the same length as Tale of the Moon. This is essentially a story about two high schoolers who end up falling in love. They both have a very um, complicated and very tragic kind of upbringings which have affected them in their current sort of personal lives and it is sort of basically how they find each other even though they seem like they're from di very different places they find each other and they're able to kind of become one person. It, this isn't one of those series where you know something tragic happens to the heroine or the hero and you know, they kind of forget about it two volumes later. This is one where the tragic things happen and it affects them for the rest of their life. It's definitely 
um, incredibly angsty, but it's angst with reason, and it's more true to life in that way. The art in it is very fine and beautiful, the relationship makes sense and is very easy to believe in, and um, it's just like heartbreaking, but also just a beautiful dramatic series, and I love it, and um, highly recommend it if you can get your hands on it. This one was published by Tokyo Pop. Uh, number nine is BB Rose by Banri Hidaka. I love everything Banri Hidaka. I have all of her series in Japanese that are not available in English, and only one of them actually made it to completion in English, which is Tears of a Lamb, which is actually my least favorite of all her series, which really makes me sad. This one and I Hate You More Than Anyone are probably my two favorite by her. Um, this one is essentially about a young girl who um, finds out that her sister is getting married and she's really upset about it. She idolizes her sister so much so she doesn't really think that the man that she's gonna marry is good enough for her, but she ends up getting kind of conned into going to um, the shop where her sister is getting her wedding dress because um, the one thing that this girl really truly loves is things that are cute and sparkly and beautiful, and uh, so she ends up getting conned into going into this shop, and she ends up meeting the owner of the shop who immediately um, gets mad at her for being uh, such a stick in the mud about her sister getting married, and that ends, ends up, some things end up happening where she ends up getting kind of bribed into working as an assistant at this uh, bridal shop. Um, she kind of finds finds her way and her finds her place as someone who works at this bridal shop, but at the same time she also starts falling in love with the owner of the shop, and it's just a very cute, sweet romance. There's another romance that is sort of um, sadistic in nature, I guess, in it, which is also really funny, and um, I just really like uh, Banner Hidaka's style. I love her art style. Everything that she draws is very um, fine. It's like fine tips. It's very um, articulated and it's just incredibly pretty. Like this is not something that I would expect that I would like to read, but there's something about it that I love so much. And number eight is Itazura and a Kiss by Kaoru Tada. Um, this is one of those series that actually progresses with the characters as they age and it is fantastic. Um, or at least that's something that I just really, really love. Um, it really progresses from them being in high school, to college, to grad school, to their working lives, um, and just sort of what their relationship is. The characters don't really change a whole lot themselves. Um, you know, he is really um, kind of mean and stoic, um, but not really mean. He's just kind of doesn't really understand emotions, and so he kind of is portrayed in a certain way, and she's really kind of ditzy and dumb but upbeat, and that's sort of like the usual character dynamic of shoujo manga. Um, so that is sort of typical in that way. The art is a little bit inferior, I think. Uh, at least there's one character in it in particular that really bothers me, Kin-chan. He's like the third wheel in the in the love triangle, and he really irritates me. At least his drawings do, and I just... Ah, it, it bothers me because I love this series so much. Um, unfortunately, this is unfinished. I think it made it to 12 volumes. Um, in English, the 12th and 11th volume are a little bit hard to find. At least the 12th volume currently is out of print, um, and I'm not able to locate it. Um, but it, um, the author did pass away while she was writing this, and she wasn't able to finish it. And I had heard that her husband was actually going to complete writing it for her, but I hadn't uh, seen any sign of that. I haven't really researched it since then, so hopefully it is getting finished. Um, but... Um, I really just like the story as it is at the moment. It is uh, definitely a fun read for me. Uh, number seven is High School Debut by Kazune Kawahara. I have mentioned this title before, and there is one thing that I love about Kazune Kawahara, and that is just sort of her understanding of shoujo manga, and how she takes those regular tropes and she just sort of turns them slightly. You can always anticipate what kind of things are going to happen in a shoujo manga. There's always really similar um, scenarios that you have to kind of go through. They're kind of rites of passage of shoujo manga, um, and she uses them all in this series, um, but she changes them, and the results are not always what you would expect, and so that is just really, really delightful and refreshing. Um, her art is not the strongest, and um, I would probably say there is one of her drawings in this manga that is probably my least favorite drawing in all of shoujo manga, and every time I read this I always stop at that picture and I just stare at it because it makes me crazy. And uh, so she's not the strongest artist, at least in like 
uh, human movement. There's one bit where um, the main male protagonist um, is drawn with one leg shorter than the other and it makes me crazy. Um, so anyway, that's just my crazy self. Um, but anyway, I really really love this series. I love uh, Kawahara's uh, storytelling and uh, I think it's just a really fun, upbeat um, series. Uh, my number six is Marmalade Boy by Wataru Yoshizumi. Um, I think there's another title that's published by her, uh, but I can't remember at the moment, and it was available in English, I think, by Viz. Um, so, but this one is really, really fun, um, and it's, it's just really kind of silly, I think. The premise of it's really silly. It's actually similar to Tazer and a Kiss, I didn't mention in that one. Um, the main characters, they kind of actually hate each other after the first volume, and then of course they end up having to live together in the same house. This one is really similar. What happens is that the main girl, her parents go on vacation, and while they're on vacation, they meet another couple and they decide that they're not in love with each other. After all, they're in love with this other couple. And so they swap partners and they decide that they're going to all live together in the same house, and this other couple just happens to have a son who's the same age as her, who they've told, you know, told her, don't fall in love with him. And so, of course, it's basically one big happy family of, you know, wife swap, I guess. It's really weird. It's actually really cute. The romance in it is really sweet. Um, the the male protagonist actually has uh, quite a bit of angst. It's a little bit odd because um, one thing that really bothers me about shoujo manga is that nobody ever asks anyone to explain to them anything, and so he's been sitting for many, many years with this um, unexplained hurt. And if he had just asked the person why this thing happened, if you just ask them at the point of finding this, you know, thing out, you know, none of this tragedy would have had to happen. He could have just talked to them about it, um, but I can't, of course, reveal too much about it. Yeah, it's just a really cute, sweet, silly uh, romance with a little bit of angst with just sort of thrown in and uh, just a lot of fun to read. Uh, so my number five is Cypher by Minako Narita. Uh, this is sort of a kind of a two-part story, so there is uh, two twins, and they happen to be actors, and um, they are sharing a life. And <laughs> this girl at school, um, a niece, you can see here on the cover, she actually discovers that it is uh, two different boys, and so she, um, in she kind of bribes them into uh, becoming friends with them, and so she. She decides that she's going to go and live at their house for a week, and if at the end of the week she can tell them apart, she can kind of announce or break their secret to everybody. Um, and it really is a story about her falling in love with one of the boys, um, but also about what this boy's, these boys' relationship is and what it's sort of built on and kind of like the hurt that they have between them and how they kind of resolve it. Um, it is a good drama. It's not a comedy. It is definitely a drama, a drama romance. Um, and it's just really, really delightful. And um, I read it quite frequently. I love it a lot. My number four is Skip Beat by Yoshiki Nakamura. This is a series that is actually still serializing. I think they're, what, on like volume 38 or something? Um, and it's just really, really fantastic. It has a great main female protagonist. She's not the, like, ditzy, silly character. She's actually got a lot of personality. She is really hard worker. She's really smart. Uh, she's really talented. Um, and she has, like, really um, effective and amazing mood swings. Um, I think that the art in this one is just so much fun. Yoshiki Nakamura really knows how to draw like really f refined and beautiful drawings as well as just like the frenetic emotion that you have when you ha are just filled with rage. There's just like a great balance of this character. She's really unbalanced and it's fantastic. It's really good. Basically this is about a girl named uh, Kyoko and she is in love with a boy from her neighborhood and he decides that he wants to become a singer superstar and so after junior high he leaves home and he takes her with him um, basically uh, so that he can become a star but not have to do anything, any work at home. And so she is effectively his maid. She doesn't really realize that she thinks that she's been like, you know, specially selected. Um, you know, as his his friend, or possi possibly more, um, and, but when she finds out, she completely breaks, and uh, she decides that she's going to get his revenge by joining the industry, and so she ends up uh, joining a Talento um, 
you know, agency and ends up taking on jobs and things. Um, and it's just, it's really wonderful. It's like, it's just fantastic. And all of the characters are really great. Um, the romance that she ends up, you know, having is, is really like exciting and, and, um, it's, I don't know, I can't explain how great the series is. I am so happy about it. Um, I love it so much that I actually pre-buy it in Japanese before the English is released, so I always buy it, read it, and then buy the English as well, so I'm like super into the series right now. It does feel like it's wrapping up, but if you are into this, I definitely think you should get on it. I think it's also being published in 3-in-1, so uh, fantastic series, great personalities, and um, Definitely more of a series that you would maybe appreciate if you're not already a shoujo reader. So I think this one has a little bit more of a wider reach for audiences than uh, most shoujo manga. So my number three would be The Name of the Flower by Ken Saito. This one is just incredibly dramatic and heartbreaking. It is, um, actually I had originally thought that this was a Jose series because it is about a girl who is starting college. Um, essentially her family has died and she is just basically catatonic. She just cannot function and you know she's been passed around by all the family members and she ends up in the lap of a distant uncle um, who also is just sort of really uh, withdrawn and um, kind of has a lot of emotional baggage and he is an author. Um, basically the name of the flower happens to be that he gives her the garden. It's sort of I guess like the secret garden in that respect but he gives her their garden and uh, she starts to tend the flowers and as the garden sort of starts to heal and she starts to learn about the flowers she starts to heal and as she starts to heal he starts to heal and it's just like a really um, beautiful story. Um, there are other characters, you know, she ends up going to college, she ends up joining the literature club, and she ends up having some, you know, encounters with other characters, which are quite fun, and, and there is a little bit of a romance in it, uh, but it's just, like, really bittersweet, and I cry when I read this. I cry thinking about it a little bit, and uh, it's just wonderful, and absolutely, you should pick it up if you have a chance. Uh, this one is only four volumes, so it's you know, if you can find it, at least you only have have four volumes to look for, but I would urge you, if you're into, like, a really dramatic and beautiful story, this one is fantastic. Um, and of course you knew that Red River was going to be in here, because I have re mentioned Red River so many times. It is obviously one of my favorite series ever. It's my number two in this list. This is by Chie Shinohara. This is essentially about a girl who is living in modern Japan, and um, about um, a queen who lives in ancient Anatolia, present-day Turkey, and the queen is putting a curse on. She needs to, you know, call a virgin to, you know, sacrifice to basically destroy the, the royal line so that her son can actually become the king. Um, and this curse basically chooses Yuri from Japan and drags her through the water um, to the past, and she ends up in this adventure um, in ancient Anatolia, and it's just like a really fun story. It's got lots of real true history in it. It's got lots of historical characters from, you know, antiquity, which I just love to see, um, and it actually has some like real uh, research to back it up. You know, this is this is how architecture worked, this is how, you know, city planning worked, this is how warfare worked, and um, I have taken classes on these things, so it, it, it makes sense to me when I read it. Um, and, uh, you know, it is more of a uh, passionate romance. Um, it definitely isn't a sweet romance. It's definitely they're just, like, passionate in love with each other, and there's a lot of, like, really dramatic poses. You know, like that very 1970s art style where everything is just um, more melodramatic than, than anything else, and it just, it's so wonderful, and I love it so much. And this is one of those, um, female protagonists where she is strong. She is a strong character. You know, of course she's, like, afraid in a, in a foreign land, and, you know, she needs help, but at the same time she goes out and she does things, she helps the people, she learns things, um, and she becomes, you know, like, a leader in, in this country, and it, it's fantastic. So, um, I love the series. I have a very hard time when I start reading this that I can't stop reading it, so it is one of those things that I'm kind of very particular, like I know that I have a week and I can just read this. Um, so I haven't picked this up this year yet, uh, usually I read it in January, um, but I haven't picked it up because I've just been way too busy to just sit and read this, which is how I read this series because I love it so much.
Um, and before I get to my number one, I do have an honorable mention, and I, you know, all of my titles, they're all ones that were licensed in English, but this one isn't, and that's why I didn't really include it in this list, and that is Love So Life by Kaede Kochi. It's about an orphan teenager who's going to school, and the one thing that she wants to do when she grows up is um, basically take care of children, and so she's currently working at a daycare. Um, and then it's about this young man who is a new sort of TV broadcaster, and his um, brother goes missing, his sister-in-law has just been killed in a car accident, and now he is left with two infant or toddler uh, twins, a uh, boy and a girl, and so they are incredibly hard for him to handle. He's working really hard, and so he ends up taking them to a daycare where this girl happens to be. Um, and he is sort of at the point where he he needs to um, reevaluate what he's doing because he can't really take care of them, and so he's about to basically, um, you know, effectively. Uh, kind of take a step up, step back in his career just so that he can stay home and rear these children and um, he goes to pick his kids up at the daycare and it turns out that they are absolute angels because this other girl is here. He decides to hire her as a as a babysitter um, because she just sort of works wonders with these children. She's just really good with them. Like it is, it is a romance and it is very sweet. The kids are very sweet in it but it, it really is just sort of like about how they become this sort of um, family. You know, they, they are different parts, you know, she's orphaned, these kids are basically abandoned, and uh, the man actually, you know, he has uh, some real family issues as well. His family basically didn't care for him, he kind of grew up without family, so they form this family. Anyway, I really, really, truly love the series, and I am so looking forward to someone picking a license up for this. Um, it is a little bit difficult because there is a romance between a teenager and an adult, and that is one thing that uh, publishers don't seem to, um, or they have a, a really hard time actually picking up licenses to take the chance on those types of titles, and uh, it's unfortunate because this one is just really beautiful and harmless in that way, at least. Um, but I absolutely adore this series, and there's currently a sequel coming out that is Life So Happy, which is the story about the children now that they are in, like, middle school. Um, so it's just, it's just wonderful, and I'm, like, really, really enjoying this series. And my favorite series, which, um, maybe is a bit of a surprise, or... This is Beauty is the Beast by Tomo Matsumoto, and this is a series that I pick up very often. Um, this is a five-volume series. It's essentially about... Uh, boarding school or like living in the dorms at school. Um, this main character here, her parents have decided that they need to move away and so she ends up living at the dorms and she meets uh, some of the other people in the dorms. Um, so it's a little bit of a story about some of the other characters that she ends up living with as well as some of the boys who live in the boys dorm, particularly um, a boy named Wanibuchi, you know, the mysterious character who has a whole bunch of rumors around him. Um, you know, people assume that uh, he's an animal, that he, you know, he was in prison and that he gets into gang fights and you know, does, um, you know, misdeeds in, in the night. Um, so he is, you know, someone that everyone kind of avoids. Um, but she is one of these characters that is really, um, she doesn't have a lot of, like, self-awareness and she has a lot of self-esteem. So she kind of just sees him and has no problem going and talking to him and she ends up actually making friends with him. Um, and, um, it's just really, like, fun. It's, there's a little bit of romance in it. They don't have, like, I don't know that, that I would say that they have a lot of chemistry, but it's just, like, really, really fun. He obviously has some, some things going on in his, his past and stuff that need to be resolved, and she, of course, is going to be the key to resolving those things for him, but at the same time, she doesn't have things in her past that need resolving. Sure, she's just really, really incredibly likable as a character, and, um, very mismatched with this other character, but it's just such a delightful and fun series. Or one of the things I like about this series the most is Tomo Matsumoto's use of chibi or like simplified drawings. Um, you know, most characters, um, when they're like chibified or like made cute for comedic effect, they're just sort of like shrunken. Um, and Tomo Matsumoto literally just has like sweeping line movements. They are more simple than probably stick figures, but they represent emotion so incredibly well. I am like so impressed every time I see them. Her drawings in general are just like really, really beautiful and, um, you know, the main character is like certainly eye candy. Um, like he's deliciously drawn and uh, I just love this series. It's only five volumes long, so it's one of those titles that I pick up over and over and I probably read every year, like multiple times in a year, just because I need to feel better and, uh, 
you know, anytime that I need like a little bit of a laugh or a little bit of like cute, happy, fun time, um, I would pick Beauty is the Beast. It's fantastic. Highly recommend it. If you ever have a chance to read it, it's just a lot of fun. Anyway, those are my top 12 favorite shoujo manga. Um, if I was going to make a list of like the top 10 titles that I recommended, it probably would be a little bit different than this list, but this list is sort of just compiling all of the titles that like truly bring me joy when I read them. Like I just love reading them. I love the experience of reading them and I love seeing all the things. I love seeing the drawings. I love seeing the story progress. And even though I've read them so many times, I love them every single time. And so, you know, the one thing that I'm looking for in manga more than any other thing, more than any kind of an analysis, is how much joy do I feel when I read this. And uh, hopefully if you pick up any of these titles, if you haven't read them before, that you would also feel joy reading them. Um, and I hope that you are feeling joy reading manga in general, um, because that's really why we do it, isn't it? Um, anyway, thank you so much for watching my video. If you've read any of these manga, let me know what you thought of them below. You certainly don't have to agree with me. I am not, uh, I don't, I don't mind disagreements. Um, you know, let's chat about it in the box below. Uh, if you have a top 10 favorite shoujo manga, let me know what they are or make your own video. I'd love to see it. Anyway, thank you so much for watching my video and I will see you in the next one. Bye for now.